Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to take you back to the morning because uh, when I wake up in the morning, I usually take two pieces of soft bread, put them in the grill, set grill for like a minute or so until they become slightly brown. Then I lay a turkey and cheese on one piece and spread butter and jam on the other one. Mmm. As much as I enjoy my morning breakfast and eating my morning sandwiches, the thing that I enjoy even more is the smell of the grilled bread. I bet that some of you, if not all, look for a scent to wake up in the morning. It could be the smell of the grilled bread, again like me, or any other bakery product like Manouche, or even the smell of roasted coffee, milk, or eggs. All these flavors, they have one thing in common. Mostly, they are originated from the interaction of proteins and sugars contained in these foods. Rest assured, I'm not here to talk about food, nor to give you a cooking lesson. I'm far from being a chef. But I'm going to talk to you about a great chef, the human body. Yes, the human body is a great chef. It does not only digest the food that you eat, but also it generates most of the molecules that you need. Take, for example, carbs, and particularly glucose, which is the simplest sugar molecule. Whenever you are not eating, or when you proceed, sorry, whenever you are not eating, or when you proceed to um, have a, a carbs-free diet, this is where your blood glucose levels will decrease, or the brain relies entirely on glucose in order to generate energy and to function. So your body will react automatically to this drop in glucose levels and will start producing glucose in the liver, eventually delivering glucose to the blood. This process requires several reactions occurring mostly in the liver. Similar to the synthesis of glucose, your body is able to produce many molecules that it needs through thousands of reactions. These reactions are driven by efficient workers, the enzymes, which are able to forward and reverse these processes. This is why we consider these reactions of being reversible. It's like building a puzzle. You will start collecting your pieces and putting them together. Eventually, either you're going to frame the resulting picture or you're going to dismantle the pieces and put them back in the box. So, these reactions are considered to be reversible, but on the other hand, some reactions, they proceed in an unfavorable manner and eventually they are not controlled by the body and not driven by the enzymes. Again, among these irreversible reactions, one is particularly important, the unplanned binding of a sugar to a protein. This reaction is similar to the reaction occurring in my morning bread, and it is called the Maillard reaction or glycation. This reaction is considered to be irreversible. It's a one-way reaction. We compare usually irreversible reactions to baking. You mix together flour, eggs, milk and sugar, and then you bake them in order to form the cake. But this cake cannot be converted back to its ingredients. Therefore, irreversible reactions cannot be undone, and in most of the cases, they can cause diseases and problems. Imagine a protein circulating in the blood, like hemoglobin, responsible for the delivery of oxygen. This hemoglobin protein can encounter a glucose molecule and can bind to it. Eventually, this couple will also attract other molecules, and it's practically like a, a snowball effect. This will lead to what we call the advanced glycation end products, or AGES. This is a meaningful acronym because AGES, they do accumulate with age. And also, this is important because even normal individuals having normal blood glucose levels, they can generate these ages. Furthermore, ages, they also affect nearly every molecule in your body and every type of cell, this, these small units, living units, constituting the body. Hence, you cannot do anything about it. 
and your body seems helpless. Moreover, ages are known to be one major factor in aging. Also, they can lead to several diseases like atherosclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and cancer, just to name a few. But is glycation, this irreversible process, really irreversible? Recently, a group of researchers, including myself, showed that this glycation can be undone. In fact, a chaperone called DJ1 is able to reverse glycation, separating the sugar molecule from the protein. What is a chaperone? A chaperone is a normal protein that is normally available inside the cell. But its work and role is mostly important whenever the body or the cell is exposed to different kinds of stresses, like heat, cold, and acidic stress. Usually, I compare chaperones to the rescuers of the Red Cross. In normal conditions, you know that they are present. You can even see them, like whenever there is a car accident on the highway, or when your neighbor is really sick and needs to be transported to the hospital. Nonetheless, their role and their number are significantly increased, especially in abnormal conditions, like, for example, during the war. So, let's say that your body is infected by a virus. It will react to this virus by releasing its own defenses. This will lead to an increase in uh, body temperature because we have an inflammation occurring. Consequently, while your body is having its own battle against the virus, your cells will start expressing more chaperones in order to fight any damage caused by this heat stress or increase in temperature. So, back now to DJ1, our chaperone. We were wondering why this protein, Parkinsonism-associated protein, is present in cells during stress, and what role does it play? Until we discovered its deglycase activity. So, we were able to show that DJ1 is able to dissociate a sugar molecule from a protein and proceed with the deglycation. Consequently, when DJ1 is overexpressed, the ages will occur less or even will, could be avoided. And all the diseases that I enumerated earlier on related to glycated proteins can be minimized. Furthermore, we showed that DJ1 does not only act on glycated proteins or on the protein-sugar couple, but also on glycated nucleic acids like the DNA. You know that the DNA is the most important molecule that we have inside the cell. It dictates the cell behavior, it carries the genetic information, and practically it manages everything occurring inside the cell. Consequently, glycation of DNA is even worse than the uh, glycation of proteins, because it can lead to the uncontrolled proliferation of cells, and this is what we call cancer, or even to the cell death, and this is what we call apoptosis. Therefore, by separating the glucose molecules and sugar molecules from DNA, DJ1 will be able to prevent uh, cancer from occurring, but also will rescue uh, the cell from its own death, practically avoiding neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer. Yes, it's true that glycation, it's not really, um, for most of the part, the, um, ch uh, choice, uh, the lifestyle choices that we have and hence we cannot prevent it. You can play it smart, trying to avoid carbs from your diet. This may lead to the decrease of glucose that is stored in your body, or even for fat that is produced from glucose. But it will not lead to the decrease of glucose circulating in your blood and delivered to the different cells. Therefore, the body, your body, this great chef, will continue to produce glucose and all the different molecules that it needs. It will continue to run its reactions. It will continue to cook. Nonetheless, DJ1, our chaperone, will be present to protect the body from glycation reactions, from the damages that are caused by sweet proteins and sweet DNA. It will be able to reverse back cooking and mostly decompose the cake back to its ingredients. DJ1 is able to change what is irreversible to reversible.
our discovery our discovery will cause the winds of change to blow even further bringing our human body to safe harbor thank you